Hello, China fans. Now, we all know this is these are some pretty dark days for all of us. Um, and I want to first start off by offering my condolences to the family and friends of China, Joni. Um, I, I would like to say that, that, well, part of me would like to say that, it, that this was, nobody saw this coming, but I think a lot of people did. And I hate to say that because part of me wanted to stop it, you know, as a fan. China's the one that actually made me want to start watching the WWF. She really did. And I, and I actually became fans of other people because I started watching it because of her. I caught a, a pay-per-view. It, the, the channel unscrambled for me. I didn't do nothing about it. I just flipped it to it, and it, for some reason, I unscrambled. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to get to watch a pay-per-view match for free. Okay, <laughs> but it was Triple H fighting somebody, and they weren't calling him Triple H at the time. They were still calling him Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And um, China couldn't get involved. If she tried to get in the ring, it would disqualify Triple H. So she wanted to get in and, and get involved, but she couldn't. And I don't know who he was facing off against. I was sitting there going, I don't know any of these people. But when they showed China, I said, wait a minute. That one was pretty damn buff. When did they start allowing women as big as her to get in the wrestling organization? I'm going to start watching this. I want to see who she has to fight. <laughs> but, and from right then I became a China fan, a DX fan, then a Stone Cold Steve Austin fan, then a Rock fan. And that's, you know, and Edge was in there somewhere, and uh, then the Hardy Boys and the Dudleys, and I mean, it was... It, those years were just awesome. From about 97 to, I'd say about 2007, maybe 2010. I don't know exactly when The Rock and Stone Cold, uh, Steve Austin, got out of wrestling. Uh, but that was about the time when I, I, I watched a little bit more wrestling, even without those two guys left, you know, those two guys uh, uh, in it anymore. But it just wasn't the same, you know, without those you know, cast the characters, and then Edge retires. Shawn Michaels is he comes back, then he retires, and you know, it's just it's all the star power seems to be just kind of dwindling, and I don't see anybody any replacements really. I don't see any real cool gimmicks or any cool characters. Nobody's got the mouth that The Rock had, the mouth of the South, as I like to call him. Nobody's just got it. Nobody's got the redneck thing kicking like Stone Cold had, and. and and nobody's got the bad girl image like China had, the, the silent enforcer, uh, uh, other than maybe Beth Phoenix could pull it off, but that's about it. And last time I checked, she was injured. She might be back now, but that was probably a year or so ago when she was injured. I don't know. You know, it's just this one thing after another, you know. And um, when, when I saw Joni on The Surreal Life, and she was hitting the the vodka bottle as hard as she was, I said, she's, she's destroying herself. And as a fan of hers, as a fan of China's, I don't want to see her doing this to herself. And you don't know how hard it was for me not to try to jump through that TV and come out on the other end on that TV show and put my foot in her ass. I mean, literally. And say, stop this. There's no reason for you to destroy your damn self. I'm too much of a damn fan of yours for you to destroy your damn self for what? What what kind of issues do you have that are going on? You need to tell somebody. And and I happen to know plenty of junkies. I got I tampered with the bottle a little bit my damn self for a couple of years and, and I started going down that dark path. <clears throat> Luckily for me I'm not really able to, I don't have that gene in, in me to really become an alcoholic like my father or my brother might be able to do. Uh, I just don't have it in me. But I know so many people that have so many, that have one issue or have many issues in their life, and we all have certain issues, certain things that we just can't seem to defeat. We'll stand up to it, we think we've defeated it, and it's still there. It's just, we've just driven it back into the shadows, but it's still there. I mean, I, I don't know. I've, I've had it happen to me, and that's why I found comfort in the bottle for a little while. And I had to pull myself out. Nobody pulled me out, and then no professional people pulled me out. I pulled myself out, and, but not everybody can do that. 
but I wasn't as far into it as probably she was or someone else. And, you know, so I got lucky and, you know, with that epiphany that I had, I said, I don't need it. You know, I still drink, but I don't drink every day and like I once was. So, and why was I drinking? Because it numbed my feelings towards stuff. And that's the reason why most people get involved with drugs anyway, because they're looking for that that numbing effect because of their, their, they don't like their economic standings. They don't like the size of their butt. They don't like the fact that, that who they're related to. They don't like the fact that whatever. You know, they don't have enough money in their pocket or whatever. It's just it's, There's always something. You don't like the color of your eyes so you get high so you just can forget about it. That's what we always do. It starts off, you think it's recreation, but you're actually going to it for a subconscious reason is just to hide your your problems, your issues, the way it always is. Don't lie to yourself. Or you can lie to yourself, you just ain't lying to me because I've been down that path before myself. I was messing with weed and alcohol because I was trying to numb my feelings or my thoughts about certain issues that I was having that are still around to this friggin' day. I just manage them. Sometimes there's just stuff that you're just never going to be able to get rid of. You have to manage it. That's the unfortunate side, but I, you know, and I'm not trying to say that I know Joni, but I noticed she was hitting that ball awfully hard. I think she's had a rough life to a certain extent, and with, you know, everybody handles their problems differently. And she was a lot further down that path on that surreal life and on celebrity rehab than I'd ever been. But I had already taken the first, I'd already walked a few steps down it, and I said, i got to stop this. Nobody stopped her. As many times as I, as, as many times I see her hitting that bottle on the, one of those TV shows, I said, somebody's got to reach out and stop this woman. If we're all fans of hers, some of us should have done something. Maybe some of you did. I didn't know who to write to. I mean, if I wrote a letter to her, was it really her that was reading it? If I wrote her an email, was it really heard it would send me a reply. I mean, I don't know. And I damn sure didn't have a phone number. I didn't know her that well. But she did have some issues. What they were, I don't know. And how many, I don't know. But as I said before, I've known enough junkies in my life, and I almost started going down that path my damn self to know that it all starts because we've got some kind of issue. We, we're not happy with our life. We don't we don't, we don't, we're not happy with the things in our life. We have to find an external way to make us happy. That's the problem. She was looking for that, and I don't know why. She had plenty of fans, but she still wasn't happy. You know, they always say life uh, is lonely at the top kind of thing. I'm not saying she was ever at the top, but, uh, you know, you can have a, you can have a hundred billion fans and still be a lonely, depressed, person and that's it's, it's from one end of the spectrum from the outside looking in you're going how can you be that way but from when you get on that inside you're going i understand how i can be that way now because i am that way <laughs> but it's i don't know people i don't know I, I wish some of us fans could have banded together somehow and stopped her from doing this if it is that she deliberately took uh pills and od she just gave up but um, you know, I was I was a huge fan of hers. Uh, I, you know, whenever I played those video games, console video games, you know, like SmackDown or Raw, I would always have China as one of my allies of my created character. I'd try to make my character look like me in real life. And uh, and when they added the whole uh, Mama Sita thing from Eddie Guerrero, I'd take Eddie Guerrero out of the the entrance. And have my character be in there. And my character come out and brought her the flowers. That's just just the way it was with me. I always liked China a lot. And it pains me to know that she's gone. She wasn't but 45 years old or 46. And uh, that's just too damn young to go the way she did. Um, part of me is hoping it might have been some kind of medical thing she didn't know about. And she just went. That would be that that would sit well with me a little bit better.
than if she just gave up on life and took a bunch of pills and said F it all and pulled a Chris Farley. I No. Because she either had a lot of enablers around her or you can't stop a freight train from going off a cliff. You know, I don't know. I, I just don't know anymore. But she will be missed by us China fans. And if you're, you know, if you were watching WWF, WWE when she was around, you probably remember her. And uh, she is one of the, the WWF, WWE fold, you know. And it's a pretty much a dark day. I'm actually kind of irritated to keep hearing about Prince, and I don't hear nothing about China. That, that irritates me because I was not much of a Prince fan. I was more of a China fan. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, that's that's I don't know if that's a coordinated thing or just it's a coincidence or, or whatever, but I mean you would figure that they would at least mention her too. And I haven't heard much mention of her, period, other than what my brother told me. And but I had been working a shutdown and I hadn't had a time really much time to think about it, other than to think, damn, she's gone, you know, and that's about it because I just been drained. <coughs> Excuse me, and um. I don't know. Would have been nice. Was I could have met the woman. I had to sit down and really talk to her and you know, tell her that she ain't alone in whatever issue she's got. She needs to talk to somebody. You know, because there is there are times that you can that it's easier for me to talk to a friend of mine than it is to talk to a family member about certain issues. Sometimes it's hard it's easier to talk to a stranger that maybe or maybe not you'll ever see again. You could tell them things that you couldn't tell your own family, like dark secrets and shit. Maybe she could have done the same thing to her fans, but we'll never know. None of us, I think, could have. If she had no email address you could contact her from, no phone number, which most people don't give out the phone number. Celebrities don't. They might give an email address, but who's on the other end? They might give an address, a mailing address, but who's at, the, who's at that address or who's going to be picking up that mail from the P.O. box. You see what I'm saying? Do you know? Do I know? No. But I will say this. I became a fan of hers pretty instantaneously. And then it went... It, because she was with DX, I became an instant fan of DX. Then it was Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Then it was The Rock. Well, Edge was in there somewhere, too. And then it was Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, and then it was, the, you know, the Hardy Boys and the Dudleys, which came from, I think, ECW. So, you know, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been watching it in 97, and onward to about 2010 or so. If it wasn't for her. And I had some of the most fun years during that time period watching wrestling. And I owe that to... See, in China, of course, the planets kind of aligned that that day in the channel unscrambled and all this other stuff. And I just happened to catch a glimpse of her and said, who is that? And looked her up and said, okay, she's with DX. Okay, I don't know much about DX, but I started watching it and I said, these guys are crazy. And it went from there. So it was just, it was, some of it was a little blind luck, but it was mostly China. You know, the fact that I saw her and said, i got to start watching this, and that was it. So I'll say this, and this is just from me and the bottom of my heart to China fans. And maybe maybe China's listening to us. Who the heck knows? We, don't, we just don't know where we go when we, how much we can, where, where we go when we leave this world and don't know if they can hear around the world what people are saying about them. Even if they've never been to, to, like if I've never been to California and I pass away and I was a famous celebrity, could I hear what the people of California are saying about me? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So, don't know. But I'll, I'll just say this. I hope that China can find peace in the next life and it would be peace that she was never able to really find in this one. R.I.P. China, you will be missed. Peace out, people.